standard and board. And he's going to talk uh, about the city and how the city is responding to the challenges of climate change. So please welcome Mike. Business perspective, 
climate change is also bad for business. Now, most people associate um, carbon emissions or greenhouse gas emissions with so-called fossil fuel companies, so that's oil and gas and, and coal. And you know, there is increasing use for, or increasing demand for oil. Uh, despite everything we hear, oil consumption is still increasing. So you could say, from that perspective, things are going well for these fossil fuel companies. But the problem is that with CO2 increasing and the damage that's causing, and also now the recognition that there is uh, amongst policy makers and governments, we heard about the Paris Agreement in 2015, with that recognition, it's actually bad for business. Not only are they being forced to extract less uh, coal from the earth and drill less oil and less gas because essentially they can't burn it. Uh, there is a so-called carbon bubble that exists. Uh, so in the world of business, it's now the concept of a stranded asset. These are companies like BP and Shell, all these, all these big multinational oil companies that have all these reserves buried in the ground. And if the current climate policies that have been pursued by governments under the Paris Agreements is, are stuck to, those assets cannot be monetized. In other words, they can't be turned into cash. So that's why they're called stranded. So that is very bad for business. So this has been uh, very much related to the drive to decarbonize the economy. So the politics is that we need to mitigate the causes and adapt to the effects of climate change. So mitigating essentially means trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, of which CO2 is the most uh, prevalent. Uh, and that really means moving away from fossil fuel intensive uh, industries, high carbon industries, uh, to low carbon industries. And that, that usually means moving from, say, coal fired power stations to renewable energy, such as wind and solar uh, and hydro. And also, not just on power, power is a very and energy in general is always the, the most obvious target. There's also transportation, it's also uh, land use, we heard about agriculture earlier, all, uh, energy efficiency, all these are industries which are developing to mitigate the impact of climate change. There's also the whole world of what's known as adaptation. Adaptation is basically making yourselves more resilient to the impacts of severe climatic events such as storms, hurricanes, floods, droughts, and so on. And that itself is as big a problem, or probably even bigger one, than trying to move away from high carbon to low carbon. So that all comes with a massive, massive price tag. Uh, see here, we've got it here, 63 and a half trillion, and I repeat, trillion pounds, which is the estimate from the World Bank and the World Economic Forum between now and 2030, 2015 to 2030. So that amount of money is, is colossal, but you also have to remember, this is where the city comes in, that there are nearly 100 trillion dollars, it's about uh, uh, 90 trillion pounds of investments floating around the world. Pension funds, asset managers have all got their money invested in various different types of, whether they're bonds or loans or, or stocks, and if you add them all together, that's around 90 trillion pounds. So when you look at the figure of 63 and a half trillion over that 15 year period, it sounds a lot, but in the scale of the investments that exist in the world, it's actually uh, a manageable number. But the problem is, and this is where the city comes in, is where is the money going to come from? So we're talking here about sustainable investment, sustainable money. So green finance, is something which is uh, a recent phenomenon which has developed in the city of London and other financial centres around the world. That's basically <coughs> trying to create the financial investments, the stocks, the shares, the bonds, the loans, where people put their money in, the big institutional investors, which I mentioned earlier, where they put their money in, that is all turning green. One of the biggest examples of that is actually the green bond market, which I'll come back to in a minute. But this is coming from two main sources, the public sector, through government money, and the private sector, which is basically companies and investors, private investors, individuals, and institutions. So it's actually the private sector which has uh, been contributing the most. 
and will mainly be the biggest contributor going forward. If we take renewables, which is you know, wind, hydro, solar, £186 billion pounds was invested in 2016 in renewable energy just, uh, you know, just in that sector globally. And 90% of that is coming from private sources. So that's why sustainable investment in green finance is so important, because it makes up the bulk of this sustainable finance drive. And importantly, the city, in, with a capital C, is going green. And I mentioned that we are looking at private investors for providing the bulk of the money, and we're seeing new sectors develop in the green finance market, uh, which is where I'm working. That's what my job is, the head of sustainable finance uh, s and Global Ratings. We are seeing things like green bonds, which are basically uh, big amounts of money which are lent to companies and governments. That money then being allocated to sustainable investments. That could be green power through uh, renewable energy, it could be energy efficiency, uh, electric vehicles for low carbon transport, or it could be in the world of water, uh, better water usage for big projects. I'll give you a classic example. Uh, recently, um, the uh, super sewer in London, uh, which is uh, known as the Thames Highway Tunnel, which takes um, uh, sewage overflow, so there's a big storm and the water overflows and, and that has been going into the River Thames for many years. They built this massive tunnel to take that sewage to new uh, efficient uh, water, wastewater treatment plants in East London. That is being financed through £10 billion pounds worth of green bonds. And so that's where this type of money is going into. That's just an example. The green bond market has grown from virtually zero about five years ago to around 160 billion uh, in dollar terms uh, uh, last year, and we are predicting around 200 billion uh, this year. So that, that represents basically the scale of growth, 80% of compound average growth rate over the last five years, just in green bonds. So we're not looking about loans or funds or any other investment. So this is the normal growth that we're seeing. Uh, and at the retail level as well, we see here this is a, uh, a stat on social and responsible investment. That's grown from 13% in uh, the, you know, Canada, Europe, and the US in 2014 to 26% in 2016, and it keeps on growing and growing and growing. So, this is what's happening at the moment in terms of green finance, uh, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, even with countries pledging nearly four billion uh, in climate pledges at the last climate change summit, uh, that's not really enough. There needs to be far more that needs to be pledged by the countries themselves to match all this money coming in from the private sector. So what does it all mean for us? Uh, essentially, you know, there is work to be done in finance to improve uh, sustainability. Uh, I work in finance, I work in a particular area, which is sustainable finance, looking at green bonds. Uh, and if you're interested in finding out more, there's material outside on the stand where you can look into this and see exactly what we're doing at S&P Global. But there are lots of opportunities for careers in sustainable finance, whether it's in the private sector, you know, there's some examples here which I won't go into now, uh, or in the public sector, working for governments or regulators or uh, so-called NGOs. These are people like uh, WWF, Greenpeace, um, these are all entities that have their own green finance or sustainable finance departments because even uh, a, a, an organization that looks at protecting wildlife knows that money matters for sustainability. Thank you very much.